Is the RTX 3060 Ti from Galax worth it? You're probably wondering that, especially if you've clicked on this video from Search. And these cards, I find the funny thing about Galax is they don't post enough cards to North America. Where in Australia, these cards regularly come up in stock. And the good thing about this brand is that they're constantly hitting around MSRP. So in Australia, the 3060 Ti, I was told was coming in at 688 Aussie dollars. I managed to find two of these on a sale for 699 Aussie dollars. So I managed to snag up these cards and I wanted to test them and see how they compared against the Founders Edition, where straight away, the cooling performance of this card is extremely impressive. I was actually surprised that this was an MSRP card because a lot of the MSRP cards that I've tested, especially on the a 3080 line, they've come around with just mediocre temps, mediocre noise. This thing here was, I'll pull up the temperatures straight away, was scoring extremely good at 28 degrees uh, C ambient temps. Now Delta adjusting this, which I usually test, or I like to Delta adjust to 23 C ambient. This was bringing it down to 63 degrees ambient. And the noise on top of that was also phenomenally low. And so out of the box, it went to around 47% fan speeds, and this was at 34 decibels. So setting a custom fan profile and upping the fans higher, especially if you want to overclock the card, is definitely going to be worth it. Though taking the card to 80% and even 100% fan speeds did start to bring the noise up to considerably loud levels. So the cooling performance checks out, and they've even included RGB, which you can control via software on the two 100mm fans and on the side of the card. It's also got a metal back plate and going through the dimensions here, I'll pull them up on a screen for you. That's if you wanna mount this in a mini ITX case, it does come in over the two slot region on the depth and the card weighs in a tad under one kilo. Though, how does it compare against the 3060 Ti and other graphics cards? Let's start rolling the benchmarks for you guys. It's for you guys. It's for you guys. Let's start rolling the benchmarks. For you guys. For you guys. Guys, guys. Guys, guys. Let's start rolling the benchmarks. Rolling the benchmarks. Rolling the benchmarks. For you guys. Guys, guys. I'll even throw in some ray tracing numbers to see that this card is doing okay. I mean, if you wanna play, for instance, Cyberpunk 2077, you can do that with ray tracing turned on. I prefer the medium settings, 16 and esiotropic filtering, and then turning on ray tracing on medium with the reflections. I find the shadows isn't really worth it, at least in terms of my personal visual. Though definitely if you wanna get something that will give you a really nice experience in Cyberpunk 2077, which I've been saying this to um, everyone that I speak to who's got the same opinion, the storyline in Cyberpunk is extremely good. It's one of those games, at least since Baldur's Gate 3, that I jumped into and I'm just really enjoying not just the story, but also the game mechanics and all the different choices and customizations you can do with the characters themselves, especially when it comes to the perks. Now, of course, if you want to undervolt these cards, you can do that quite easily. But one thing for me personally with the 3060 Ti, it's pretty much the only card coming out on the new series of cards this year that I would overclock on. And this model here being particularly impressive with the temperatures and noise, I would definitely think about overclocking this thing and then getting close to RTX 3070 like performance. However, there is some good news related to that. And that of course is those temperatures we looked at before, but the power consumption is also extremely good on this card. Though as for outputs, we've got one HDMI 2.1 and then three display ports supporting up to 360 Hertz at 1080p. Of course, if you wanna go with a 4K OLED, you can get 4K 120 Hertz. So summing things up with the Galax 3060 Ti EX. This card here is doing that Galax formula, which over the last few years, I have grown to like quite a bit, especially if you're looking for value for money. And that is offering a card around MSRP 
but does have the RGB bling. It does have the cooling performance. It does have the low noise. And of course, this one here is quite a big model. So if you buy this, you're definitely gonna be happy with your purchase, at least down under in Australia, coming in as one of the cheapest cards on the market. Now it does require a single eight pin connector and it doesn't utilize that NVIDIA 12 pin. This one right here, needing that single eight pin, does do a good job and doesn't need any more power requirements because it's a very efficient card out of the box. And to top all that off, if you buy this card, you get a three year warranty at least down under, which does make it even better or more appealing option than previously thought. So good job from Galax. This is a solid card bringing in solid price performance. If you guys enjoyed today's review, then be sure to hit that like button for us. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to drop that comment down below. And I'll be sure to have a gander, just like the back of this box, which got ganderized while I was opening it. And this question of the day, which comes from Christian Lopez. And they ask, I'm not getting close to your FPS on the 3080. I get around 50 FPS with the custom settings. Does the VRAM matter in this game with ray tracing? This is referring to our Cyberpunk 2077 video where we took a look at all the different quality settings. And I think the 3080 is gonna be a little bit slower than the 3090. It's not gonna be that much. If I'm getting 55 FPS, for example, you can expect to get around maybe 50, 45 to 50 with a 3080. This is like the ray tracing turned on and all that at 4K with uh, custom settings. But the VRAM, the 10 gigabytes of VRAM won't make a difference versus the 24 in Cyberpunk at 4K. And the reason being is because we did some tests and we found it was only using about seven gigabytes of VRAM at 4K. Hopefully that answers that question. If you guys have stayed this far and you're enjoying that tech yes content, then be sure to hit that sub button, ring. Wait, we're gonna do that again. Ring that bell. And I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye. How does it compare against the 3060 Ti and other graphics cards? Let's start rolling the benchmarks for you guys. 